how are you doing right now? How are you processing things? You said you were right there when it happened. Just, just walk me through everything that you've been through over the last few hours or so. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> when it first happened, my heart was racing probably for a couple hours after. Um, absolutely devastated, not sure what to think, almost in denial. Over the last couple of hours, I've talked to a lot of family members and a lot of friends just trying to process kind of what happened. Um, it's very tough. I think it's going to take a while. Right now, I'll have moments where I'm okay and then moments where I'll just break down in tears, just in shock about what actually happened there and the catastrophic effects that it's going to be for the next little bit. Um, yeah. Did you know him at all personally? Um, I didn't know him very well, but I did meet him uh, in Dubai um, at the top of a hotel. We were staying at a hotel where they were staying at when he was competing. And the only thing I remember about him just was how nice he was. Um, he didn't know who I was, but he took the time to talk to me. Um, talked about the competition and how it was going for him. Um, and he, 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 he owed nothing to me. He didn't know who I was, but he took the time and it was very appreciative. I've always cheered for him just because of that moment. Um, I know he has a brother that's competing as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. And watching his brother run up and down the sidelines of the water looking for him was something that I'll carry with me for a long time. And you were there, you were there when it happened? Yeah, yeah, we were on the side. Uh, he was probably 150 meters out in the water. And I saw it, I saw him start to kind of scramble. He started to doing small turns and he was trying to get his head out of the water. And it was at that time that we started screaming to the lifeguard, like he needs help. And then within seconds he was under and he never came back up. Uh, and I mean, watching the video, you can visibly see the two lifeguards there and him in the middle. It's like, yeah. I mean, from our standpoint, it just looks like nothing's being done to save him, but yeah. you, you had a different vantage point. Just no, I, I agree. There was two lifeguards right there. The one lifeguard, because somebody actually jumped in and the one lifeguard came over and talked to him and told him to get out of the water. But he said, listen, somebody's drowning. She ended up going over to where he went under, but she just did a quick paddle around and then just paddled back out. I feel like at that point she needed to blow a whistle and stop the event yeah. because you could have had a lot more help in there pretty fast. And that was only like a couple minutes after he had gone under. So at that point, something could have been done. But once the event's finished, it's 30 minutes gone, right? There's, there's not much you can do at that point. And I know how, I'm not in the CrossFit community, but I work out, I know how close that community is, but your guys is just like elitely close to yeah. talk about how this impacts you guys as a family. I think the CrossFit community really needs to lean on each other right now, use the support of one another because it's gonna hit us all differently. It's devastating. I'm not too sure where the CrossFit Games is going to go from here, but they're going to have to make some drastic measurements to make sure that this never happens again. Um, the community is very strong, which is going to help us get through this, but I'm just praying for his family.